So you're originally from China, mm -hmm. and you did. You said that you didn't have a master's degree; you only had a bachelor's degree. Um, and then you got into a PhD at UT Arlington. UT Arlington. Arlington. Yeah. I mean, how did you decide you wanted a PhD? How did you decide you wanted to come to the U.S.? That's a good question. So, like in the college, I have two other roommates. The one come to USA. Mm -hmm. Another went to uh, England mm -hmm. uh, for like study, right? And that's like signal. You say people around you are going abroad. And I also, also have my boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, like also came to USA and like, okay, bye, we have to break up because I'm going to USA to study. I'm like, okay, USA is the number one country. If I have to go somewhere, I'm gonna go USA and I'm gonna apply it, everything just by myself. And I understand the experience, no matter what, it's gonna either I would go back to China or if I would want to stay in USA, it would only do good. That's why I decided to really come. But 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 at the time, I don't really understand like different states, right? If I would understand, okay, Silicon Valley is the center for innovation. I would have picked a university in California instead. I I was not applying university all across the different states because of. I didn't know the state actually matters. I I mean, I, I grew up in this country and I still didn't really understand that. I was very sheltered. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, I always thought like New York was the center of everything. But now mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, I've been in tech a while. Mm -hmm. San Francisco is the center of tech. New York's the center of banks and business like that. Yeah. And yeah, I had no knowledge. And then, but most <laughs> most people our age at that point in life don't have that knowledge. Uh -huh. um, and it, it's not something like our parents can enlighten us about because they haven't gone through the process. Yeah, my parents actually know nothing about what I want to do. They would think it's crazy. Oh, you're going to USA. <laughs> yeah, so. So they don't have a degree at all, either of them? Oh, uh, no, not at all. My mom went to school for three years and my father nine years oh wow yeah i'm the first generation who went to college so i consider that very lucky actually mm -hmm. because born like be raised in a household that your parent is just so easy to be beyond the expectation like you are all your parents are always proud of you <laughs> because the bar is so no right so i i grew up in the voices like praise Oh, you're doing so good, you know, and they don't really tell me what I need to do. It's like I figured it out. And I actually consider that experience very lucky compared with kids who grow up in your family. Your parents have to decide with the future and give you all the kind of guidance, you know, to put, make sure you're on the right track. But I was like, I just explored my track, everything just by myself. And that's why I'm like so good at dealing with uncertainty and navigating whatever it is. I'm like, I am going to figure it out and I can't. And whatever I do, my parents are proud of me. <laughs> well, I mean, that goes against like the stereotype where like usually Asian parents, it doesn't matter like which country or culture they're mm -hmm. from. They're always demanding more from their child. And, oh, yeah. I, I'm so... luckily the opposite. My parents <laughs> is like, Oh, you're going to USA, you're already good, you went to college, you don't have to go to do that. And whenever I try to work very hard, I'm like doing a startup, and my mom is like, we're already so proud of you, you don't have to work so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so you do it because of your own inner drive and the things you want to achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually people who are very successful aren't doing it because their parents told them to go out and do it, they do it because they themselves want to do it because they have the ambition. Uh, that is true, but I did PhD because I thought, oh, uh, maybe I'll be a professor in the future. <laughs> it's it way different, like how I turn out to be where I am. Uh, but then I thought, I want to be a professor and I become more realistic <laughs> because doing a professor, you need to go to a very, very top university. I'm international and I, changed my major and I skipped the master right at the, when I was applying to university. So, and I, my university was ranked 
like ninety in computer science in USA. But I I also got into another one like Clemson University. I think it's slightly better, but still, right? Like you are not in a position that you could do top notch research, and especially with a professor that who is not gonna support you to do the right research, it's be, become even harder. So I decided to. Uh, not take that pass. So, what tools do you use to stay up to speed with like all the different happenings that are in AI? Uh, I don't consider myself as a person who likes to follow a lot of channels, a lot of people on social media. I don't. I consider social media very very noisy,、mm-hmm. right? The way I consume knowledge is, I know. You might want one channel where it can gives you information about what's the newest things out there.、Um, it might be a good like news native channel that aggregates all the technology advance, what's GitHub repo out there. And the one I use is called Alpha Signal. It's a news native,、mm-hmm. and I think they did a decent job because. They've to summarize what's the hottest、uh, Twitter tweets, right? What's the top repos in the AI space,、mm-hmm. and what are、uh, what are the top research papers? So really, there's a lot of research going on, but the one that makes a huge difference is very small. And the second way I follow, like the second way I do the learning, is to stay very relevant about where I am. I might look ahead, maybe one year or something. In terms of okay, what I want to achieve in one year, and I walk backwards. Right? Do I want to build up a lot? For example, right now I'm trying to build a lot of knowledge in recommendation、mm-hmm. space, and you can talk to people. You can talk to researchers who's already and say, you know, what's the trend here? Talking to people, they would give you very high level and the research paper. All the research paper, if someone is in their space, they follow <laughs> what 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 what's the most important papers in the space, and they would be a very good、uh, group of people that you can quickly onboard yourself with this state of the art. But if you just Google, right? If you just Google, you don't know how trustworthy. Those source and they might not give you exactly what you want. So I would say the second way to learn is to talk to people and understand where the state of the art is. And I would read those top few papers that represents the field. And then from those papers, you get to understand、uh, like how it was done before. Right? You get to span a few papers because they always link. They always side between each other, so you get to figure out a lot of information. And every single paper is able to talk about the domain, you know, the history,、mm-hmm. and then you get to learn and you find more papers. And from those papers, you know, you just like search and then make a lot of new paper in the future. Of the,、uh, but you just need to know a few top of the best. You only learn from the best. Never re- read a random paper. I don't read a random paper. It has to be a paper that's very, it's worth my time to read. I think the thing is we are very very time sensitive. We want stuff happen fast.、Mm-hmm. Right? We can't wait. We just become so impatient. <laughs> And which I think it is a good thing because imagine if before you have to go to another country to attend a meeting, but now you can just do it online, right? Well, the meeting. Is it more valuable? I I do consider it's more productive because you don't have to go leave your family to attend to that meeting, right? If you could do it online, and it's still the same value because a lot of people, this is, we consider the like we need more and more human conversation. They're not necessarily in your geography, like close nearby. You might build your relation with nearby people for sure, but you also need a lot of Relation with people globally.、Mm-hmm. Maybe one day you visit and you're like, oh, I talked with that person about the accommodation system. We become friends. I would visit、uh, this person when I went to the country, right? And then the same thing, they come to where you are at. It's a different camp, 
it's like you know they're like so far across the world, but there's still opportunity to meet someday, mm-hmm. and you can still continue to engage with them because you're not necessarily finding the people in your field in the same location. I want to give people value. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think mentor sometimes the men- mentor others because it's a way to help them to learn to teach. It's a great way to learn. Because the time when your mentee is like asking you these questions, right? It gets you to think. Maybe normally I haven't even thought. I didn't summarize how you should process something like this, right? You end up like uh, putting it into words, like something you already know, but it's a time for you to put into words and something like give like guidance. Uh, but not everyone is into it for sure. It's definitely has nice value for them mental. If just purely based on people's if they want or not, and then the system won't be balanced. It's just you want enough good people to be in the system to mentor, mm-hmm. right? And you want this men- mentee to actually be appreciating what they are getting and they know they have to contribute back to in the future. And, and that it, is like social responsibility and stuff like that. But there are people that don't have that and that kind of goes back to people who are only interacting with bots only see themselves as the center of the universe and they don't really see life as a give and a take they just want to take yeah 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 exactly and uh i i wouldn't want a system like that so i'm creating a system right i think even if it's not about running right i i'm trying to create a point system to keep them like accountable if you are spending more than 200 points a system give you two conversation with mentors right you can book meetings with them mm-hmm. and the the mentor would have uh, make points like they it's like they got rewarded by points right and if your points going be no than some points i i wouldn't book you for any mentorship meeting mm-hmm. because i know it's time there must be someone for his next experience than you, right? And the, or maybe it's on a different topic. May you just have to be good at something to give back before you can take more. Like so, right now we only cover AI, right? But mm-hmm. in the future we might cover some other space. Um, now, if you are if you're like someone totally new, maybe you're good with like playing some games. Not not like that game. I mean like. So for example, what if you are good with exercising? You can help another person with exercising. What if you're good with painting, right? Mm-hmm. This is always something you should be good at and to teach others. I encourage everyone to teach and to learn on the platform. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Hi, I'm Sarah from Sarah in Tech. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to, if you want to learn more about Sarah in Tech, follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, Just look for Sarah Herberger, that's H-E-R-B-E-R-G-E-R, or on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, we have Sarah in Tech as the handle. If you're looking to hear the unedited version of all of these interviews, they're available on Apple, Amazon, and Spotify, uh, just Search for Sarah in Tech.